speaking of recruiting. Mm-hmm. There's an interesting story here. I've, I will admit that I have never heard of Ryan Ginn, and I will admit that I have never heard of uh, Land of Ten. Landof10.com. Yeah. Uh, I believe this is a it's a Big Ten SB Nation site. Is right? it? Is, is this it SB Nation? I, I, I don't. don't it doesn't have the, the look. I'll, t- I'll okay. tell you that much. All right. Never mind. I should probably. I should probably do some research on that. Um, let That's me fine. see. I'll look. You, you keep talking. Yeah, there you I'll go. Look. He covers Ohio State football for Land of Ten, which Land okay. of Ten is not an SB Nation site. Just, You're right. It a, is not. It's a Cox it's Media a, Group entity. Right. Okay. So, uh, Ryan Ginn, but he's got a very interesting story up at, tech, at landof10.com uh, about Ohio State dominated Texas recruiting in 2017, but a fight is coming is the headline. And it's about Ohio State's push into Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, to get some of the best recruits in the state, specifically Jeffrey Akuda from South right. Grand Prairie and, uh, Baron, and Baron Browning, Browning from yeah. Canada. Two great, two of two of probably I think we're fair to say no worse than two of the top five defensive prospects yes. in the state. That's fair. Yeah. I think that's pretty fair. Both both pledged to Ohio State. And what's interesting is that you know he's got. Um, He's got, and also J.K. Dobbins, by the way. Yeah. But you know, he goes on and talks about why they've had the success, the 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 um, the emphasis they put on coming down to Texas uh, and recruiting. Um, but there's one really interesting thing here, and I believe the mm. Dallas Morning News picked it up. Yes, everyone picked it up. Everyone picked it yeah. up, and it comes from Jeffrey Akuda, the outstanding safety at South Grand Prairie. His coach there, Brent Whitson. Brent Whitson, who's been at South Grand Prairie for a couple of years now, yeah. I imagine. Um, He's been there for a couple of years, and he has a, an interesting quote about. Um, I'll read this in full. He's talking about Tim Beck, uh, and you know, t- you know, you quote, you know, you had Tim Beck, who's no longer there. They know the lay of the land. Tim knows the state of Texas. Beck, the quarterbacks coach at Ohio State, uh, the past two seasons helped the Buckeyes infiltrate the state. He coached two Texas high schools from t- 1999 to 2004, and Texas high school coaches saw him as one of their own. Yeah. Contrast that with former Texas coach, head coach Charlie Strong, who needed all of one week to alienate the entire state. Quote, Charlie was a great man, but a horrible hire, end quote, said, uh, said South Grand Prairie coach Brent Whitson. You get here and the first thing you do is go to Florida for recruits. All it did was cost him about 2,500 head coaches at Texas high schools, end quote. That's a pretty big quote there from Brent Whitson uh, at South Grand Prairie. Um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot yeah. to unpack here. First of all, um, there's not 2,500 <laughs> coaches in the state. Uh, there's about 14 to 1,500. Right. But anyway, that's uh, his point is well taken. Right. His point is well taken. The idea that by going with the first move that you made being going to yeah. Florida. Optics are everything. Absolutely. That all of a sudden yes. you're saying, wait, why are you going over there when you are in? You are the flagship right. state. Uh, program of the yeah. state of Texas. Why aren't you focusing? Why aren't your you efforts? beating down all of our doors? Exactly yeah. right. You should be at our door. You should yeah. be at all of our doors at once. Yeah. And this was, you know, people take it too seriously, but people think what I think uh, Dan Wetzel had a tweet or something this morning, or no, uh, Dan Wolken. The Wolken. Other, the other yeah, Wetzel would not hot Wetzel. tweet about no, this. Wolken would. But Wolken yeah. had something about like, oh, they're taking it so Texas Tech football coaches taking it too seriously or whatever. Yeah. But. At the same time, it does matter. And we right. talk about this all the time, about right. high school football coaches are... <laughs> I want to phrase this very carefully, but they're like a sorority, man. Right. Because they it's a club. Just, it's a club. For sure. They gossip, gossip, yeah. gossip, gossip, right. gossip. Yeah. Those guys are... They talk to one another. Yeah. And they are a fraternity. Um, <laughs> how things look, how word travels, these it things is, matter. It, they gossip. They absolutely. That's, that's why I use the word sorority. It, yeah. it, because in, in for, I've been in a fraternity. There's not that much gossip in a fraternity. <laughs> right. It's like a. It's like <laughs> that. Yeah. That's what it is. Is that they they talk. Yeah. They talk and they are a fraternity. Matt Step will be the first to tell you. They, they love to talk and they take yeah. care of each other. Okay. They, they do all absolutely. Have, they all have each other's back. They want to. They want to beat each other's buns yeah. off on Friday night. But in the end, they all the Texas high school football coaches yeah. have each other. It's an back. extremely admirable bond. It is. It's a great. It's a great bond. And so the idea that. When he goes off to, when Charlie Strong goes off to Florida to recruit, then all of a sudden you're saying, what, te- you're not good enough, you know, you're not good enough, or Texas isn't good enough for you? Right. There's that notion of, you know, you're alienating mm-hmm. those coaches. Mm-hmm. Now, that brings up an interesting, and look, that is that is at least how one coach, Brent Whitson from South Grand Prairie feels. I bet if I were to talk to a number of other coaches, there would be at least some that felt the same way. Yeah. I doubt, I will say this, I doubt that that is 
that every coach feels the same. Right. Because they are all always, free yeah. thinking and, and thoughtful guys. Sure. Yeah. But I feel like they that there there would be probably at least a considerable amount of people who agree with Coach Brent Whitson that right. going to Florida and recruiting, you're saying you are the flagship University of Texas. Why are you going off there? Yeah. That brings up a bigger conversation. And we talked about it when, when uh, Matt Rule got hired at Baylor, who didn't have a ton of Texas ties. He goes and he hires those high school football coaches because it's that important mm-hmm. to him. Brings up a bigger conversation, which is, does, do Texas FBS programs owe it to Texas high school football players and coaches to recruit those guys in mass? That let's just say that for some reason, um, Rhode Island... Rhode Island became this haven of high school football players that all of a sudden they had 700 amazing high school football players. Better than the players in Texas. Just empirically. This is a hypothetical. They don't. (laughs) Does Charlie Strong then owe it to the high school football coaches and the players in the state of Texas to forego those guys and recruit in the state? Uh, that's, it's, it's a hypothetical. It's, it's a hypothetical obviously. because because, because we, all, answer, we all believe that you can build twelve really good FBS programs right. in the state entirely comprised of Texas right. players. This we is, I have I've sort of two answers to this. Number one, uh, it doesn't owe anyone anything, mm-hmm. right? There's nothing you owe anyone. You know, if you want to ignore what these coaches have done to produce and help grow and nurture this mm-hmm. talent, that's your prerogative. Sure. You, you don't owe them anything. You are stupid not not to you, yeah. establish those relationships, use them. And the other thing that I would follow that up with, and, and sort of the crux of this debate and my thought on it, mm-hmm. is I think some of the angst and the anger is misplaced. Charlie was only doing what he had to do. He had relationships with these players in mm-hmm. Florida already. Mm-hmm. The misguided move, I think, in a lot of ways, and I liked Charlie Strong, uh, was that Texas hired him in the first place because this was the only way it was going to go that first year. There was mm-hmm. no way he could come in here mm-hmm. and just ignore all these kids that he could have talked into coming to Texas already after he'd spent years recruiting them and developing these relationships to spend two months trying to fake, mm-hmm. right? Sure. Fake a relationship to convince... Fake Texanness. Yeah, you fake... Know? fake a bond and a connection mm-hmm. with these Texas high school football coaches just to try and get recruits who he had no relationship that, with. So I think that's more on Texas for not seeing that coming and putting him in a position that was a no win essentially. Texas is his Charlie Strong in my in my mind. Tex, uh, Charlie Strong's loyalty is to the University of Texas, right. not to Texas high school football coaches. Right. As much as high school football coaches don't want to hear that, his job is to put together a team that wins championships. Now he didn't do that. You know that's why he got fired. He didn't do that. Right. But, and I heard this when I was out two years ago. I wrote a story for the magazine about El Paso, Mm -hmm. about high school football after the Canatillo run to the state semifinals. And then I kind of talked to UTEP head coach Sean Kugler. And Sean Kugler, great guy, he said all the right things. He's like, well, you know, we want to recruit the best players. You know, we we always want to, we always have first dibs on these guys. We want to make sure we get the best players in El Paso. He's saying the right things. But then you go and you talk to some high school football coaches and they say, well, he owes it to the city of El Paso and to us to recruit our guys and to bring our guys in. And that's, it's a really interesting. That's a little bit different though. It's a little, it It may be. A little bit. The the regional thing is a little bit different than Texas for Texas State. Right. You know, like that's, that's a different. it's it's an interesting it's an interesting conversation it I is. think yeah. that because Texas high school football coaches want and and us let's be real we I always prefer when the best players in Texas play their college oh, football yeah. in Texas. Well, there's no doubt that's there. what we want and, and it's more fun and, for us I selfishly and, that's what yeah, I want and no offense to Dan Wolken mm-hmm. uh, they are they're taught. But this is the best group of coaches in the country. Mm-hmm. Like you talk to you talk bar to, none. Yeah, you yeah. talk to you talk to any of the coaches. They'll tell you that these guys are more ready to play from day one consistently yeah. across the board. And do some of them have an inflated view of their role? Sure, but sure. I think it's earned. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, I think, I, I think right. nationally that reputation is fair. I think I, I think, think you're they're right. the best. So for me, this is an interesting debate about whether or not it is a it is a I don't want to say sin. But that's no, fine. Uh, at least, a, at, you know, at least a kind of sin 
It's to, a misstep. To go outside the state. Yeah. Now, you know, again, you have to weigh the loyalties and you have to weigh what the most important things are to each coach. And the most important thing is winning. That if the best players in, in the world were in... If the best players in the world were in Mongolia, then Mongolia would be a recruiting hotbed right. for Texas FBS coaches. Right. I hate to break that to you, but yeah. that was what it would be. Right. But I do... You know, there is... It, it just speaks to the kind of... Politics is such a dirty word, but there is politics to the situation right. that you have to kind of kiss the ring of Texas high school football coaches, yeah. else you be cast out. And that's apparently we're finding out what happened to Charlie Strong at Texas, which is yeah. very interesting to me. So, yeah, no, and I and I do think there is a mistake that coaches coming into the state can make in that one of the other parts of that article was about how uh, coaches were a little frustrated that Charlie didn't come to them mm -hmm. when they were trying to recruit one of their kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the communication breaks down, because kids aren't available on certain dates, and these are, compared to other coaches around the country, and not blanket statement, but in general, mm -hmm. they they are. It's like we talked to Todd Peterman yesterday. This is a process that they're used to doing. Mm -hmm. They want these kids to get recruited. They want to put them in the best position to be recruited, and they've got the facilities and resources and staff that are best aligned mm -hmm. to make that happen. So to not have those relationships, to go around them. It seems like more trouble than it's worth. And if know? that, and if that's, and, and and you hear about first impressions, and right. if that's the first impression you're giving high school football coaches right. in the state, then you're playing from behind. Yeah. So, it's an interesting conversation. You can read the. I'll, I'll tweet the link. It's uh, at landof10.com. It's it's written by um, uh, Ryan Ginn. It's worth your time. It's yeah. Good, it's a good read. And look, to be fair, we're always going to side with Texas high school football coaches in pretty much every argument. Now nah, they're dumb. <laughs> I didn't have I didn't have a joke. <laughs>